I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me and what I thought I would do give you like an overview uh, over the current state of uh, CAR T cell therapy and uh, this is my disclosures. So I'm briefly going to talk about the history, then touch on uh, CAR T cell therapies for hematological malignancies and then in the second part of my talk, uh, talk about the current status of solid tumors. The CAR T cell therapy has really exploded. I did this uh, yesterday uh, looking at PubMed. There are more than 600 publications in uh, 2018. And it's actually interesting if you look at the inflection point of the curve really correlates with the first uh, published reports on uh, successful CD19 CAR T cell therapies for diffuse large B cell lymphoma from the NIH and then from uh, UPenn and CHOP for CLL and ALL. And uh, as of yesterday, there are, uh, looking at clinical trials, they've got uh, actively recruiting studies. Again, the majority of the activities in the United States, China, and to a lesser degree in Europe. And you, know, you might wonder why Europe is lagging behind. It really has to do with the regulatory environment, which is much more stricter than uh, in the US as well as in China. So where did it all start? Uh, in the late 70s, uh, Kuvana et al. published a manuscript where they actually took the heavy and light chain of an antibody and change them out with the variable region of the alpha and beta TCR and generated a chimeric molecule which was a two gene product and showed uh, uh, that they could redirect uh, T cells. This was followed up by a manuscript by uh, Zilic Eschar's group, again showing this dual gene approach, um, changing out the variable regions of the alpha and beta TCR, but they also had one antibody where the specificity of the antibody was located predominantly in the heavy chain and they were able to create in the end a single gene construct. And as most of you know, this was then followed up by Zelik Ashar, who generated a construct, a single gene construct, where the specificity is now derived or presented in a single chain variable fragment hooked up to the transmembrane domain and to zeta signaling domain, and he calls these cells T bodies, or this, uh, to highlight that you really marry uh, both arms of, of our uh, immune system. And uh, as pointed out by Kath, and I just want to reiterate, it's very important to understand that CAR T cells recognize target cells very different than alpha, beta, TCR cells while alpha-beta TCR cells gen uh, recognize peptides which are presented on MHC class I molecules, CAR T cells in general recognize proteins which are expressed on the cell surface. Conceptually, that has um, two advantages. First of all, CAR T cells can recognize non um, uh, structures which are non-proteins. A good example is GD2. And then the other is that a lot of tumors downregulate MHC class I expression as a part to escape the immune system. Lastly, if you work in a field where cancer is rare, like pediatric cancer, using CARS allows you to enroll patients regardless of the HLA type and make some of these studies feasible, which would not be feasible if you limit yourself to a certain HLA molecule. You can now generate, and that really has not changed over the last 20 or 25 years, CAR T cells in a very uh, um, reliable fashion. You activate PBMCs in the presence of cytokines. You then genetically modify these uh, with a lentiviral or retroviral vector. And then you expand them for another week in the presence of cytokines be, uh, for you can um, uh, use them clinically or for preclinical studies. And again, it's probably forgotten in part that the first CAR T cell therapy study was actually conducted in HIV patients, and that is a slide which was given to me by Bruce Levine. So the first RAC meeting with genetically modified T cells, a CD4 Zeta CAR, 
uh, actually was presented to the RAC in, uh, 19, in March of 1994, and uh, with these studies, the groups could show that actually these uh, cells safely persisted for a long time uh, in these patients. However, which also became clear that having a car which only is zeta domain was insufficient. And on this slide, I just summarized you, I would say, what I would call the canonical T cell activation paradigm, where uh, T cells receive a signal one in the form of a TCR or car zeta activation. However, for full T cell activation, you need single form. Uh, two in the form of co-stimulation, and then signal three in the form of cytokines to really get significant T cell expansion. Again, the history of co-stimulation, I would say, is interested, interesting. While clearly, um, uh, Michel Sedelin pioneered it for, C, uh, for CD19 cars and uh, using CD28 and Dario Campana using the Forbum BB uh, endodomain. If you look in the literature, the first person who really um, generated a chimeric co-stimulatory domain is Margot Roberts when she was a cell genus. Uh, she is also the former CS of, of Kite. And then interestingly, Helen Finney published again in industry, published the first chimeric receptor containing a CD28 zeta uh, signaling domain. In general, in the field, we divide CARs depending on the number of signaling co stimulator domain, uh, one calling them a second generation and uh, two a third generation CAR. And if you carefully look in the literature, I would say it's not clear if a second co stimulator domain is better than having a CAR with a single co stimulator domain. You all know that, uh, as already mentioned, the field really was pushed forward by the tremendous success of CD19 CAR T cell therapies, uh, which studies which were conducted at multiple centers. And what I would like to do, rather than reviewing these studies with you, highlight some of the lessons we have learned. If you look at the three most successful CD19 cars, which are either FDA approved or in later phase clinical testing, one thing becomes apparent the cars are all designed differently. While they all have the same single chain variable fragment, they differ in transmembrane domain and co-stimulator domain. Not only is their structure different, but also their manufacturing is different, either using lentiviral vectors or retroviral vectors, or uh, differences in cytokines. Other lessons we've learned that, as already pointed out by Cass, in contrast to some of the virus-specific and multi-tumor antigen-specific T cells, you have to give patients chemotherapy uh, to uh, receive uh, um, CRs and long-lasting responses. CAR T cells can cure chemo refractory disease regardless of the underlying driver mutations. You definitely need co-stimulation. Depending on your application, you might prefer CD28 because CAR T cells persist shorter in contrast to Forbon BB ligand. And then, as expected, or not surprisingly, targeting a single cell antigen may lead to immune escape. Lastly, CAR Ts can induce significant toxicities in the form of cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. So what is the current issue? There is a need to define uh, have predicted biomarkers to define toxicities and predict outcome. There is a question how to best uh, prevent and treat CD19 negative relapse. And then really the big question is how to integrate CD19 CAR T cell therapies with other therapies. At least in pediatric cancer, there is a big effort now to test these cells up front for high-risk patients who uh, do not uh, get into remission with uh, conventional therapies. These are some of the recent studies by um, the UPenn group and also by Mike Jensen's group looking at uh, CAR T cell composition, uh, if uh, that can be associated uh, with outcome. Uh, Freyetta et al. looked uh, not only at the CAR T cell product, but also at T cells prior to initiation of CAR T cell production uh, for CLL patient 
and Mike Jensen's group recently published their findings that TNF-alpha positive CD8 positive CAR T cells in the CAR T cell product uh, correlate uh, with um, outcome. I think there is still a lot of biology to learn and this is just uh, one highlight of studies we are currently doing using 10x single cell RNA-seq to track uh, infused CD19 CAR T cells in patients where we can now look at uh, do transcriptomic analysis looking for example at transcription factors like EOMS, TBET and TCS7 which play a political role in uh, T cell plasticity. What about CD19 negative relapse? It has mainly been observed in uh, ALL patients, but also has been uh, described in lymphoma patients, and this is from a review from um, the Crystal Meckel groups highlighting different uh, uh, CD negative relapse rate ranging from 25% to 7% depending on the study. What are the mechanisms of CD19 relapse? And I would say there have been, so you can categorize that in three big categories. There are mutations in CD19 leading to uh, splice variants. There, are, uh, there is lineage switch where a CD19 positive leukemia uh, returns as a myeloid malignancy, which of, of course is CD19 negative. And more recently, the UPenn group has described integration of a CD19 car into B cell blast, making the leukemia uh, uh, insensitive to CD19 car <coughs> T cells. Uh, luckily, we now have um, um, a consensus statement how to grade CRS, because I think the field really had has grappled with the fact that we could were not be able to compare CRS grading uh, across different um, studies. And uh, at the latest ASBM team meeting, or it's now called ASTCT, uh, consensus uh, guidelines were published for neurotoxicity. Personally, I really like CRS grading because that you can now do at the bedside without really having to uh, check any data, and with that hopefully will be very reliable and comparable across um, studies. Of course, there is a question, will there be successful CAR T cell therapies without CRS? And to a certain extent, I think CRS is the nausea of chemotherapy. So, you know, there is almost no chemotherapeutic agents without uh, nausea. However, there was a published study just last published last week in Nature Medicine by C.Y. Chen's group highlighting that CD19 cards with very small differences in the transmembrane domain uh, can induce a high response rate with patient, in patients uh, without uh, causing CRS or neurotoxicity. However, these studies have to be uh, confirmed by others. In regards to other uh, B cell malignancies, I really do not have time to uh, discuss these in detail here and just want to highlight that there's lots of activity, not only for B cell malignancies, but also for multiple myeloma and also T cell lineage disease. And there is significant effort in the AML realm. AML traditionally has been difficult because a lot of the targets we are interested in are expressed on uh, normal hemo hematopoietic cells or other cells which are in essential uh, in our uh, body. But nevertheless, there is significant effort. Uh, COG is planning a study, uh, will initially start at the NCI, targeting CD33. The Baylor group is putting uh, CLL cars forward and uh, we are also developing similar to the City of Hope with CD123 CAR T cell therapy study. Uh, while most of us uh, take the pedestrian approach of giving these cells as a bridge to transplant, uh, Sar Gill groups at uh, UPenn has developed a strategy where they knock out CD33 in normal hematopoietic stem cells and then you can envision an approach where you give patients uh, CD1, CD33 CAR T cells and a gene edited uh, CD33 progenitor cells so you can now then uh, induce long lasting AML remission without any toxicity uh, in the normal hematopoietic system. 
So what about solid tumors and brain tumors? As everyone in the audience knows, there has been significant effort uh, in the field targeting uh, CAR T cells really from the beginning for solid tumors and brain tumors. And uh, this review s summarizes some of the targeted antigen. If you look at the list closely, roughly two-thirds of all studies target a handful um, of antigens, and only one antigen in the group is what I would call a genuine um, non-private new antigen because it's a variant of EGFR-V3 which is expressed in subsets of high-grade gliomas. If you look at the outcome of uh, solid tumors CAR T cell therapy studies, the table is very different than uh, those for CD19 and BCMA CAR T cell therapies. And um, really, over the last decade, only few responses, um, CRs, partial responses, and stable diseases were, were um, resolved. Very recently, there was a meta-analysis of CAR T cell therapies, which also included uh, 86 solid tumor patients from eight study, and uh, the CR rate uh, was 4.1%, which of, of course is far lower than um, on uh, the observed hematological malignancies. But CRs can occur. On the, your right side, you see a uh, patients who we treated with lymphodepleting chemotherapy and HER2 CAR T cells. This patient received three cycles and went into a long lasting remission. And on the right side is a patient from uh, Christine Brown's group who rece received interventricular IL certain receptor alpha 2 CAR T cells and had a, a long lasting response before uh, relapsing with antigen negative disease. Really, the field, what it really has lacked is uh, correlative studies where we really have biopsied uh, patients after received CAR T cell therapies. And the only exception is the EGFR-V3 CAR T cell therapy study uh, from UPenn who systematically uh, biopsied or actually removed tumors seven to ten days uh, post um, infusion of CAR T cells. And they could show antigen loss variants, indicating that even after IV administration, CAR T cells can uh, home to brain tumor sites. But uh, more interestingly is that while pre-infusion tumor samples had little evidence of inhibitor upregulation of inhibitory molecules just as PD PDL1 post-infusion, there was significant upregulation of PDL1 and also an influx of uh, regulatory T cells as shown by FOXP3 positive uh, staining. So what are kind of the other hurdles? I've touched a little bit already on the tumor microenvironment, but clearly antigen and heterogeneous antigen expression is an issue. Homing and penetration of CAR T cells is an issue, and then lastly, the microenvironment. And what I would like to do in the last couple of minutes, walk you through some of the strategies investigators are pursuing to address these issues. Uh, there is a continuous need to look at additional antigens, and that is work by Remus or Renters at looking, uh, doing in silico gene expression uh, mi data mining for pediatric uh, solid tumors, uh, uh, which have uh, resulted in interesting targets like uh, glypican 2 for a variety of uh, solid tumors um, and uh, MCAM. Uh, other groups, although it's difficult to do, are pursuing proteinomics approaches. And uh, again, this led to the discovery of, uh, again, glypican 2 as a highly expressed antigen in neuroblastoma and effort to as an antigen overexpressed in almost all osteosarcomas. Uh, one, if you then think about these antigen, one question which really ha you know, has come up and the field is struggling with, can we target antigens that are expressed at low levels in normal tissue? And I think the GD2 example is an instructive story, whereas high affinity GD2 cars have caused fatal uh, encephalitis in mice, low affinity CARs, which have been tested by several investigators in the clinic, really have not caused um, uh, uh, 
these type of side effects in human and also neuroencephalitis was not seen in mice. Genetic approaches now allow you, even if there would be toxicity, to address these issues. And groups have developed uh, inducible cars, so you could uh, induce car expression once T cells are at the tumor site. There are um, uh, synthetic NOT receptors uh, which in induce car expression once T cells are activated. You can also induce or make a full functional car in the presence of a small molecule. And uh, lastly, several groups have developed split cars where the single one is provided by one antigen and co-stimulatory signals by a second antigen. And now you can have CAR T cells which recognizes, recognize antigen addresses, uh, which uh, should give you an, an enhanced level of specificity. Of course, there are neoantigens, but as you probably all are aware, most of these are intracellular antigens and in general cannot be targeted with CAR T cells. Why there are TCR mimic cars, this is rather complex finding single chain variable fragments which have the right affinity to recognize a peptide in the context of an uh, HLA molecule, but as already pointed out by Cass, what is probably a more productive strategy to think about, how can we engineer our CAR T cells to induce antigen spreading and uh, uh, activate, for example, new antigen specific T cells which are energized within patients' uh, prior CAR T cell therapy. In regards to homing and penetration, several groups have highlighted that you can express chemokine receptors um, on the cell surface of T cells to induce homing to tumors uh, targeting, uh, secreting different uh, chemokines. Some of these approaches are being tested in the clinic. Uh, Patrick Yu is uh, testing um, uh, CXCR2 uh, uh, transgenic tilts and melanoma, and Gianpetro Dotti and uh, Barbara Savaldo have an active study looking if transgenic expression of CCR4 enhances the migration of CAR T cells to Hodgkin's lymphoma site. Of course, you can also try to select out CAR T cells, which, or T cell subset, which endogenously express the correct chemokine. And uh, I think the most interesting case uh, is by Leonid Metalitsa's group, who was at UCL uh, at LA Children's and now been at Baylor for more than a decade, who really has pioneered to use an invariant NKT cell for the treatment of neuroblastoma, unmodified or modified with chimeric androgen receptors. In regards to penetration, there's been some nice studies by Gianpetro Dotti now at UNC showing that once CAR T cells are activated, they are stuck. Uh, however, transgenic expression of heparin retinase allows them to infiltrate uh, solid tumors and uh, might be a potential strategy to um, enhance uh, their efficacy. Lastly, I briefly want to touch on the tumor microenvironment. Every one of us has a favorite scheme showing uh, myeloid-derived suppressor cells, immature dendritic cells, uh, cancer-associated fibroblast, and from a, at least from a genetic approach, I think you can now conceptualize three different strategies how you can uh, kind of revert that immunosuppressive environment. First, you can increase the level of T cell activation by the provision of cytokines or engineering cells to express constitutive uh, cytokine receptors. Uh, you can render T cells resistant to the immune evasion strategies by expressing uh, dominant negative uh, receptors or chimeric cytokine receptors. And of course, with uh, advent of gene editing, you can not only silence negative regulators, but you can also uh, knock out negative regulators, and uh, some of you in the room might know that uh, Carl June's group is testing uh, in an alpha-beta TCR transgenic NYESO setting a knockout of PD-1 uh, uh, PD in adoptively transferred cells. And uh, lastly, you can target 
non-malignant cells uh, within uh, the tumor stroma. Uh, groups have targeted cancer-associated fibroblasts or uh, endothelial cells. So to sum it all up, I, I think you would have to be very pessimistic if you uh, do not believe that CAR T cell th therapies will find a place for the treatment of uh, hematological malignancies uh, in regards to solid tumors, clearly we have to make these cells more effective by targeting multiple antigen, uh, introducing additional genetic modification to overcome T cell intrinsic and intrinsic limitation. And of course, there is also the combination with other treatment modalities, uh, which I really could not uh, cover in uh, the allotted um, time period. Uh, at the end, I really also want to thank my past collaborators and foremost also my uh, new institution, St. Jude, and over the last one and a half years we've been really able to build a cell therapy program and hopefully we'll have uh, clinical studies in the near future. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Steve, and great time. So there is um, there is about three minutes for questions, if anyone has a burning question for Steve. Okay. Um, so Steve, maybe I can just ask you a question. I mean, do you think uh, now that CRS is going to be no more, that we really, ha that's problem solved and and really we should not be, if we are competent at our jobs, <laughs> we should not be seeing CRS anymore. Well, I, I think with all new therapies, I think the clinician over the last five years have really been able, have understood to um, handle it. You know, initially there was this concern that, oh, we have to let our patients have fevers for day because otherwise, you know, we will damp the anti-tumor activity, but with early use of tocilizumab, I think if you look at some of these studies, we really, um, at least also at St. Jude, none of our patients had, has gone to the ICU in the last 12 months after CD19 CAR T cell therapy. So uh, trying to having really now agents to modulate CRS and then also probably trying to cyto reduce some of these patients who have high disease burden to reduce um, antigen load and with that uh, massive expansion has really made, I would say, a big difference. Question here. In CAR T's versus the T cell dependent bispecifics, like where do you see clinicians yeah. using one versus the other? That's a good question. So it's especially for CD19, blinatunumab. So, you know, if you look at the single agent data, you know, blinatumumab in the tower study, while it was much more efficacious than chemotherapy, the median response rate was five and a half months. So I think blinatunumab really has to be used in combination with other therapeutic agents, and that is being done. Again, I'm a pediatric oncologist, uh, so I only know the COG um, field. So COG is planning an upfront study where high-risk patient will receive uh, uh, you know, blinatumumab in combination with chemotherapy. I think one concern has always been with blinatumumab is that these, the cells of these patients might be energetic and exhausted. You know, if you contrast that with ex vivo activation and expansion of cells. So I think uh, clearly I would say both therapies uh, probably will find its place. Um, Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate it.